Plain dead so we don't leave the park. Why? <laughs> Why you pick him up like that? <laughs> she picked him up like he owed her money. I don't know. I think after that, you got to give him another five more minutes at the park. Today, we're checking out TikToks that are all about Boston Terriers. See if you notice the same things I notice as we're watching. Let's go. <laughs> this is an interesting technique. <laughs> Normally, dogs pull in a straight line. They don't do circles. Oh, no. Run. Why is she running in slow motion? Run! Oh my god. We gotta work on that Boston Terrier's leash manners a little bit. We also gotta work on teaching that lady. She gotta run a little bit faster when that leash slips out of her hand. Remember, whenever you're out with your dog, the proper way to hold a leash. That loop on the end is not to hold the leash with. It's for your hand to go through. You want the loop to be looped around your wrist, so then you can grab the rest of the leash with your hand. Karma catches up to you. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Gave her a gentle reminder there. Say, we do not bite the hand that feeds us. This is actually such a great example, though, of a dog-to-dog -dog correction. That German Shepherd could have crushed that little puppy in half if you wanted to. But just the gentle pressure was enough to say, hey, listen, knock it off. Really good to see. Whoa, that's a interesting muzzle he's got there. So there's two types of muzzles. One is a cloth muzzle, which is like the muzzle in this video. And cloth muzzles keep the dog's mouth completely closed. They cannot open it at all. And these are okay, but only for extremely short term uses, usually at like the groomers or the veterinarians. If you want a muzzle for long term use that you can take your dog out for a walk with or to use during training, you want to get a basket muzzle. Basket muzzles allow the dog to fully open their mouth. You can feed them treats, they can pant, they can even drink water through. So really important to get the right kind a muzzle depending on what you want to use it for this is why kevin can't be trusted with the ball launcher alone oh kevin kevin's a troublemaker let's see what he does wait for it brings it back so far so good puts it in good and then the launch Oh no, anger, 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 anger. Kevin, patience. Kevin needs to work on his anger issues. We gotta teach Kevin to go to his happy place. Go to your happy place, Kevin. Happy place. The ball launchers are actually cool though. Assuming your dog doesn't have anger issues. Once you train them how to use them, it's a pretty fun way for your dog to keep himself entertained. What's your most viral video in 2021? <laughs> Is he actually peeing? Pretty clever if that's, uh, if he's actually going and they've trained him to do that. Oh, not the fart. I do have an excellent house training guide on my channel for anybody with a puppy that's looking to house train their dog. Unfortunately, this part is not included, but next time I update it, maybe I'll include this. They say a wet toothbrush reminds them of their mother's kisses. Hmm, I haven't heard that one before. As you can actually, as we continued, his eyes got watery and began to cry. Hmm. Couldn't take it anymore and gave him a kiss. So this is an example of putting our human emotions and reasoning onto dogs. Dogs do not cry for emotional reasons. That is a human behavior. That is just not a dog behavior. It's easy to try to rationalize and think that, but if your dog ever actually is crying, it means there's a medical issue going on and you need to take them to the vet. Uh-oh, I left the drawers open. <laughs> is he gonna close them all? Oh my I God. Open. Here, I left the drawers open. What a, what a helper. Here. One more. Let's go. Over here. I left these. Oh, open. even more. <laughs> Slam that one. Easy, little guy. That's quite clever. These days, my ADHD is running wild, and often this is what my kitchen looks like. I walk into the kitchen. I've got so many drawers open. I don't even know how it happened. I'm gonna have to rent this dog. Help me work on my problem. What do we got here? <laughs> little baby. Got a, got a taste of that water. My God. What's in that stuff? So this is the greatest thing I ever tasted in my life. <laughs> Go back for seconds. He was going somewhere but nowhere all at once. Okay, now I'm a little piano player myself. Let me see uh, how this guy holds up. Dramatic pause. Build tension. <laughs> there we go, what a rip, oh baby. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Look at the emotion. Every key, the head is back. He's feeling it. What a performance. Watch this. <laughs> Get a good whiff. Is she serious? <laughs> so again, this is a case of this looks so funny to us humans through human eyes, but in dog world, this is the best 
way for dogs to meet. Dogs' crotch areas have lots of pheromones, and when dogs smell each other, they're able to figure out so many things. Sex of the dog, the age of the dog, just all, all sorts of things. So even though this looks funny to us, this is exactly how you want the dogs to meet each other. I see a lot of the times dogs start to do this and owners then redirect the dogs to try to meet face to face, which is the worst possible thing to do. Tending to put Toby on diet. Let's give him two pieces, four pieces. <laughs> Toby says, hey, right here, mama. He says, where's the rest? <laughs> Poor Toby. Go give him more. This surely will tire her out. Teeter, was it teeter totter, right? Or seesaw. I don't know, it's one of the two, but <laughs> whatever it's called, pretty fun. Everybody's heard of zoomies, right? This is what we call the bouncies. He clearly is very pushy in your face with yeah. other dogs. You can see here he's getting annoyed, getting ready to correct bite him, him pretty soon here. Allow. Zeus is my dog. His lips and going I up, he's saying knock it off. Correction. There you go, good. Which was that? Good. And Odin got the hint. Beautiful. They're all good. Perfect. One of the best examples I've ever seen, actually, of a dog to dog correction. What you just saw there is the equivalent of a human annoying another human, and the human that's getting annoyed going, hey, knock it off. Stop. That's all it is. Through human eyes, it seems scary. Oh my god, the dog just tried to bite him. He's aggressive. No, not at all. All he was doing was saying, hey, knock it off. A correction like that, beautiful. All right, what do we got going here? We're running loops in the park. Oh, little ball. <laughs> oh no! Oh, that was a rough landing. I gotta give it a two out of 10. Jokes aside, this is actually really dangerous and dogs do not have a great sense of danger and what they should or shouldn't do. In the dog's mind, they just wanna chase the ball, but landings like that can actually cause injury. So be super careful when you are letting your dog do something like this. <laughs> Somebody wants to play. This is a great example of dog body language. And all of the signs that in the dog world means I want to play. Chase me. Get me. You'll see the play bow where the front is down and his butt goes up. You see the kind of duh, 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 stuttering. The jumping. To back. To forth. To back. To forth. In dog world, these are all great signs of a dog saying, let's play. Dogs will do it to dogs and they'll do it to us humans too. Oh, we're going, going for a little surf. Oh, <laughs> we were surfing. Now we're falling. Oh no. It was at this moment that he knew he <laughs> fucked up. Look at that face. Poor guy, lost his balance. The panic in his face. Look at those eyes. Call the Coast Guard. Boston Terrier overboard. Why do dogs run away? After you give them a little treat. So this is a really common behavior. You'll see this when you give a dog a new toy or a bone, whatever it is, some kind of treat, something that they find value in. The thinking is that the dog takes it away because it's a way of them to try to protect whatever it is that they have. In their eyes, it's a resource and they take it away kind of for privacy, you could say, and as a way to protect that resource and make sure that no one comes to take it from them. A little puzzle toy. Oh, one little piece of kibble in there? Too easy. So puzzle toys are a great way to feed dogs. Actually, this is how I prefer to feed dogs all of their meal. You put a bowl of food down, it's gone in 10 seconds. But puzzle toys, and maybe not this one specifically, but there's some puzzle toys that will take a lot longer for dogs to get the food out of. And that's the best way to feed a dog. Just pick me up. She picks him up. <laughs> Give him a little hug. Because again. <laughs> So what this woman's doing is not right and it's not wrong, but it is reinforcing barking. Every time the dog barks, she picks him up. She's giving the dog attention. She's teaching the dog then that barking equals attention. Again, not right or wrong. If you don't mind your dog barking, it's fine. But anytime a dog barks at you and you give them attention, you reinforce the behavior. Last year, I posted a video of my Boston Terrier swimming and someone accused me of abusing her because Boston Terriers don't like swimming. So miserable, eh? Well, she doesn't seem miserable to me. Well, she's having a lot of fun. The best way to figure out whether or not your dog likes something is to try to introduce them to it, give them the option to have an out to get away from it. And if they do that, okay, that means they don't like it. But if they're able to go back to it, for example, you go to the pool, you put them by the stair and they go down the stairs and jump in the pool. Guess what? They like swimming. This is Toby. Sometimes he's afraid to jump into bed. <laughs> Poor Toby. So I ordered him, get him some stairs, a ramp, his own stairs, oh, nice. Good. Daddy's lazy helper. Hey, put your stairs together. Get some help. Wow, storage too, that's pretty cool. Now Toby has his own stairs, oh, very nice. Stairs can be bed sometimes. What's he watching on the TV? Or iPhone. Getting stairs or ramp for dogs is actually really smart. Every time a dog jumps off the bed or the couch, whatever it might be, force gets put onto their joints, their hips, and if we can do things to prevent that, like the little doggy stairs or ramps, always a good thing. Solar charging, oh, 
Going for a little sun bath. Coming up on those summer months. Gotta work on that tan. Gotta be looking good. That's all for today, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and if you ever need any extra help training your dog, check out my website, brightdog.com. See you next time.